Hello, happy Wednesday. My name is Rachel. I'm one of health coaches here at Incenta Health. Thank you so much for joining us today. This week, we are going to talk about mindful moments. Um, and before we get into the weeds with that, I'm going to start us off with a quick poll of just how are we feeling today? Um, where's your energy? So when you have a chance, feel free to, to chime in. I agree with a couple of you that said, eh, I could go for another cup of coffee. I agree. Looks like we still have a couple people who haven't voted. So I'll give you a couple more seconds to get a vote in. I'm glad no one is having an, a terrible day, um, but that's okay. I'm gonna end that poll. Thank you for participating. <sighs> Welcome everybody again. Um, today, on this chat, we're gonna be talking about implementing mindful moments. And I will preface this with, I am not a mindfulness expert. Everything that I share with you, um, I have learned through my own experience um, from others who teach uh, mindfulness, mindful self-compassion, um, really focus on taking care of ourselves from the inside out. At any time, you have, if you have an idea that is different, or you have something to share, please feel free to take yourself off mute. Um, we can have a conversation or you can put something in the chat um, and we can have a conversation that way. Awesome. <clears throat> so what is mindfulness? I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what mindfulness is. Um, at least when I think of mindfulness, I think of you know, a silent monk who sits in meditation for hours at a time. And we oh. can practice mindfulness without that being no. like, uh, yeah. Yeah. hold on, let me mute this person. Oh, I can't. Um, I'll be right back. Oh. Sorry about that. So mindfulness is a type of meditation. Um, in which you focus on being intensely aware of what you're sensing and feeling in that moment without interpretation or judgment. Practicing mindfulness involves um, breathing methods, guided imagery, and other practices to help relax the body and mind and help reduce stress. Our brain is wired in a way that once you take a deep, relaxing breath, it tells the bottom part of our brain that we are no longer in danger. So if we think about um, on a very basic level, this is our brain. Down here is our brain stem. We call that our lizard brain. Most mammals have something like this. It's our fight or flight. It's what's telling us to breathe, eat, sleep. Um, if we're being chased by a bear, it's telling us to run. And then up here we have our wizard brain or our thinking brain. What's up in this frontal cortex? Um, that's our ability to um, to think cognitively, to have emotion, to be able to comprehend large concepts. Um, so if we think about our brain in two ways, and if we flip this lid, we've all done it where we're really angry or um, just really not connected with ourselves. I'll use the example of if we're driving in traffic, somebody cuts us off. We probably flip that lid a little bit and we get really angry. We're down in here. The practice of mindfulness helps us close this back down. So we're back in our thinking brain. Um, and we do that through deep breaths. The, the long exhale tells our brain that we are safe, that we are not trying to run away from a tiger. Um, and it helps us reduce 
actually helps us reduce the amount of cortisol, the stress hormone in our body. So that is what we're trying to do with mindfulness on like a very scientific level. Um, I always like bringing the science in. So we have different types of mindful practices. Um, I am not a person that enjoys just sitting down and meditating. Um, that is not how I find mindfulness. My own personal mindfulness is every morning I wake up and the first thing that I do is snuggle with my cat. Um, my cat does not allow me to have my phone in front of me. It's very much a, I have to be present in that moment. And that moment of relaxation really sets me up uh, for a successful day. Um, this morning, I did not have the opportunity to do that. And I feel a little bit frazzled. Um, and that's why we, we practice mindfulness is to just kind of take our day from a, a 10 out of a 10, hopefully back down to like it, even just one step lower on the stress scale. So different types of mindful practices that you can implement. You can do it seated, walking, standing, moving. Um, you can lay down, but it's really easy to fall asleep when you're laying down. It's a little bit more challenging to fall asleep when you're standing up. Um, you can implement mindfulness in short pauses in everyday life. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, and you can also merge your meditative practices with other activities. Um, a lot of people practice meditation through yoga practice um, or other sports. You can be mindful while, you know, doing CrossFit if you want it to. I also bring up the, the example of if mindfulness is too hard, the moment that you take just to like, I, you know, that person angered me and I didn't punch them in the face because I took a deep breath. You just practice mindfulness. Good for you. <sighs> okay, so how, where do we start? to incorporate mindfulness. I know a lot of people get this, like, I can't do it. My, my thoughts are racing. Um, I'm thinking about, you know, my to-do list and my grocery store list, and it's supposed to snow a ton this weekend. So what am I going to do with my dog and thinking all of those things? And that's okay. When you start a mindfulness pr practice, that's okay. We say, thank you for that thought. And you let it go. You don't, you don't judge it, you don't beat yourself up, you just say thank you, and you keep moving on with your day. Um, when incorporating mindfulness, I suggest starting small and knowing that it's okay to mess up. If you forget a day or you didn't take enough breaths, that's okay, we're human. Um, we're, we move and we grow and we get better every day. So a few ways that you can incorporate mindfulness, um, and this is coming from somebody that doesn't just sit and meditate. So I hope that you can also implement these into your day. Um, one of them is to go for a mindful walk. Um, maybe not when it's cold outside, it's a little, that's not as fun, um, but going for a mindful walk when it's, it's nice and warm, you're being purposeful in this walk. So you're not doing it for exercise, you're doing it just to be one with your body and out, outside. Um, so I encourage you, if you do go for a mindful walk, don't take your headphones, don't be on your phone. Um, just listen to what's happening around you. Can you hear dogs barking, uh, birds chirping? Can you hear kids playing or, you know, a little league game um, at the park or maybe traffic? What do you hear when you're walking? Um, what, what do you see? Do you see the wind blowing? Do you see clouds in the sky? Do you see birds flying or dogs playing? Um, what do you smell? Same thing. Do you smell freshly cut grass? The park near my house is currently getting renovated. So when I walk around it, I smell a lot of mud <laughs> um, and the exhaust from all of the machines that they're using. Um, so really take into account all of those senses. What are you feeling? Does it feel good to walk faster? Does it feel good to walk slower? It's so really what mindfulness is, is giving yourself what you need in that moment. Um, and this, this is, again, it's not a walk for a purpose of like exercise. It's simply to just have a moment to disconnect, drop in and be one with yourself. Another way to incorporate, incorporate mindfulness is doing it in tandem with an activity that you do every day, something like brushing your teeth, shampooing your hair, tying your shoes, getting the mail, whatever 
whatever is in your um, in your daily routine that's a short bout of something where you can incorporate that mindfulness. I once took a class on mindful self-compassion and we were talking about actually doing this, finding a small activity in our day to, to do some sort of small mindfulness practice. Um, and a, a woman in this class shared that she decided to do her mindfulness practice while she was shampooing her hair. And she's been using the same shampoo for like 10 years. And she practiced this mindfulness and she realized that she doesn't like the smell of her shampoo because she was finally paying attention rather than just going through the motions. Um, so I'm interested to see if any of you have, have found that out, um, something like that out about yourself. Maybe you don't like the way that your toothpaste tastes or you need different laces on your shoes, whatever it could be. Um, practicing gratitude is a really good way to, to be mindfully in the moment as well. Um, and when you practice gratitude, there's like those days where you're like, nothing went well. You don't have to think about the big things of like, I'm, I'm thankful for my home and you know my job and all of that. Yes, I am thankful for that, but I'm also thankful that my jeans have zippers on them because they keep them on my body. I am thankful that I have a functioning coffee machine um, because it is one of those days where I need a second cup. So finding those those ways every day, the small ones of, I'm thankful that I can hear the birds chirping um, is a really great way to kind of settle into your body and have that mindfulness. Um, one last way, and this is not an all-inclusive list, I invite you, if you have a great way that you practice mindfulness, feel free to throw it in the chat. Um, one of the last ways is listening to a meditation while you fall asleep or maybe before bed, that's part of your practice um, to, to relax your mind and body before going off to bed. And a little bit of a shameless plug, um, with your full membership through Incenta Health, we do have a library of meditations around um, different stress, me stress coping mechanisms, and one of them specifically is just for sleep. So I invite you to check those out. If you need help locating those, please feel free to give us a call or a chat and we can, we can walk you through where to find those. Um, mindfulness again is just a practice it's not something that you will get better at it but you're never going to perfect it our brains are always on they're always wired to to keep us alive um, and to keep us safe and with time and developing a mindfulness practice you will learn to quiet those racing thoughts by thanking them and moving on um there's nothing that comes into our brain that isn't useful, but it's the way that we we file it away or we react to it. And that's really what being mindful is, is finding a healthy, a healthy way to do that. So we are going to take um, 90 seconds just about to, to have a mindful moment. What kind of mindfulness talk would this be if we didn't have that moment to drop into ourselves? So um, if you all will join me, find a comfortable seated position or standing position, and we will watch this video together. No, we won't. Hey, Jillian, what am I doing wrong? I, it, if you look in the notes, the link's in there. Okay, thank you. Sorry, everyone. There we go. Get into a comfort. Okay. Let me share my screen again with you. Technology, I'm telling you. We have some ads. I apologize, friend, friends. This isn't it either. There we go. 
a comfortable position, either sitting or standing, eyes open or closed. Start with taking a few deep breaths. You may notice a stream of thoughts or the hustle and bustle around you. That's okay. Let it happen. As you breathe, feel the sensations in your body. Are you warm, cold, hungry, have any tension or pain? Take a moment to relax your neck, jaw, your belly. Just let it all go. If you would like, bring your attention to something that you are thankful for. Maybe it's a person or an event or something else. Take one more deep breath in and exhale. Open your eyes if they are closed. Take a moment to see how you feel. And now you can go on with the rest of your day. Thank you all. Hope that was helpful. Oop. Hopefully you all feel a little bit better after that. Um, again, um, if you want more of these types of things, um, feel free. Oh no. There we go. Um, feel free to check out our meditation library. We are constantly adding different videos of different links to that. So if you ever need a a moment to yourself um, for a guided meditation, feel free to check those out. They're all both on our app and online. Awesome. We just chatted about mindfulness. Congrats, everyone. Um, Becky, yes, they are for as long as you have a, a fully unlocked um, membership, those meditations are free. Yes. Good question. Our upcoming topics for the next few weeks. Um, uh, March is National Nutrition Month. So next week we're gonna talk through how to build a healthy plate um, and some common uh, nutrition myths. One of my favorite topics, come prepared with all of your questions. Um, I love the science behind, of it, behind all of it. So feel free uh, to bring your toughest ones. Um, we're going to follow that with positive feedback loop. So how do we retrain our brain to not go down this negativity spiral? Um, and then the last Wednesday of the month, as always, is a health coach Q&A. So send us your, your questions. They're anonymous and we will go over them. As always, if you want to catch up on our blog or these videos, head over to incentahealth.com backslash wellness chats. All of our videos are there. You can share them with your colleagues, friends, family, whoever it is. Um, and you can go back and watch any of the videos um, that we've done in the past. And as always, our health coaches are standing by to connect with you, to help you uh, get to your healthy goals. Feel free to email us, call us, chat us. Um, we're available Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Um, and we also invite you to connect on social media um, and connect with one another that way. So facebook.com backslash health or backslash groups backslash health healthy at home.